My name is Hannah and this is my no buy year. Ugh, my eyes are watering even worse than they were the last time I filmed. There is like a spot in the corner of this one where no eyeshadow dares to stick. Maybe if I just, <laughs> maybe if I just film like that, it'll be okay. I don't know. I'm not sure that would be hashtag worth it. So this is the video in which I am going to lay out my personal advice about how to do a successful no buy. This has been somewhat requested, and also I feel like it's something that makes sense to include in the final month of my year-long no-buy, which isn't over yet. So I might be jumping the gun a little bit by claiming that I know how to launch a successful no-buy. I have a couple of weeks left to go until I have successfully completed my no-buy, but I'm not too worried about myself. I think barring a totally unforeseen, complete psychological breakdown, <laughs> I think I'm going to make it. So I have another video that's kind of the prequel to this video that should have just gone up on Sunday, a couple of days before this one is being posted. That video is called Should You Do a No Buy? My Experience and Advice. And if you are trying to decide whether or not you think a no buy would be right for you, I recommend watching that one before you watch this one. But if you have decided that a no buy is for you and perhaps you are about to start your own no buy year in January of 2019 and you would like to know what I advise in terms of making sure you set yourself up for success, then this video is for you. And I guess that this video is also for you if you watch my channel and you're interested in me even if you're not doing a no buy. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. I forgot to say this in the intro, but obviously it goes without saying, this is just my personal opinion. I'm not someone who has made like a comprehensive study of people doing no buys or shopping issues or anything like that. I just am one person who had a problem, an overspending problem, a shopping habit, and I have combated that by launching my own no buy. And I feel like I have learned some things along the way about how to start one that is successful and some of what I've learned has just been because the decisions I made about how to structure my own no buy have ended up working really well for me. So I, I'm simply here to report back about that. Okay, the meat, the meat. Okay, so my first piece of advice is to make very clear and very thorough rules for your no buy. I tried to make really clear rules. I tried to cover all of my bases and I outlined the rules that I had made in my introduction video, which was the first video that I posted here on my channel. And I'll leave that linked down below or in the cards or something, it'll be linked. So I'm actually not gonna go through right now what the questions might be that you might have that you might need to answer in your rules. I mean, an example would be, what do you do about gift cards? So I decided to make a rule that if I receive a gift card during my no buy year, I can only use it to buy replacements, which are something that I made a rule to allow myself to buy during my no buy year. And I'm not allowed to take a gift card and spend it like money during my no buy year. But that might not be the rule that you want to make about gift cards. You might want to make a rule that says that it's your no buy year, except that you're allowed to spend gift cards like money. You see what I'm saying? You have to think about every potential gray area, every conundrum that you might come up against, every awkward moment, every painful moment, anything unusual that might challenge your no buy and then make a rule about that situation so that when you come up against that situation during your no buy instead of having to worry and waver and potentially giving room for your shopping adult brain to swoop in and make an unwise decision you'll already know what you're going to do you'll have a rule you can stick to your rule you can execute your plan you can continue to work within the confines of your no buy no matter what happens. So make your own rules and cover all of your bases, start dates, end dates, exceptions, everything. This is one of the ways in which I feel in starting a no buy you can set yourself up for success. And when you're making your rules, remember, you get to define your no buy. You don't have to do your no buy like mine. You knowing yourself and you defining it for yourself is what will make it successful. So don't listen to other people. Don't listen to the haters who are like, you're not really on a no buy if you are allowed to replace your Givenchy brow gel every two months. Don't listen. You get to define your no buy. So the other thing I wanted to say about making your rules and something to think about when you sit down to make your rules is this. 
it is scientifically proven that willpower is a finite resource, meaning we only have so much of it and you wake up with a certain amount of willpower and then it depletes throughout the day. And what that means for a no buy is that it is scientifically chemically true that if you make overly strict rules or you make too many rules across the board, you increase your chances of failing. So if you're like, okay, 2019, no buying makeup, skincare, clothing, or homewares, or hair care, or body care, or concert tickets, or books, or yarn, or gifts, and no eating out, and no Netflix, and no sugar, and no wine, and no coffee, and no internet after 6 p.m., and no video games. <laughs> Sometimes I see declarations like that in my comment section, and I worry about the person. I have successfully made it through to this point in my no-buy year without buying a single stitch of clothing, not a single accessory, not a single item for our home, and not a single crumb of color cosmetics. But on my no-buy, I was allowed to replenish with a single item every one of my skincare categories when that category ran dry and I have a lot of categories. So within my rules, I made a lot of purchases. I was also allowed to buy food from the grocery store, from restaurants, no exceptions, and I was allowed to treat myself to experiences, so mani-pedis, massages, visits to the spa, tickets to concerts, tickets to theme parks. I was allowed to buy tools for work, like an external battery for my laptop and extra SD cards for my camera. It wasn't a no-spend year. It was a no-buy year for my overspending problem. But at the same time, I took pains to include all four of my serious problem categories, makeup, skincare, clothing, and homewares, in my no-buy. I knew that if I had just stopped buying makeup and clothes, for example, I would have overbought houseplants and eye creams to continue fueling my addiction. Be honest with yourself about what you need in a no-buy and what you can achieve, and build the no-buy that will challenge you, that will be possible for you, and that will heal you. Okay, my second piece of advice is about panic buying leading up to a no-buy. If you are launching a no-buy in January of 2019, for example, I would recommend thinking of the rest of December as kind of a soft open for your no-buy rather than a chance to panic buy a bunch of stuff at the last minute. I regretted, I would say, 75% of what I panic bought in December of last year, and some of that stuff, I'm afraid to say, has already been decluttered. Try to spend as little as possible in the gear up for your no buy. If you massively overspend this month, you'll be setting yourself even further back, both financially and in terms of resetting your habits. And I'm speaking, unfortunately, from the experience of not having done what I'm suggesting. What I'm saying is don't do what I did. Okay, my third piece of advice is to look for community support. Make yourself part of a community of like-minded people during your no buy year. And this is especially true if you don't have support in reality around you, if you don't have people who are there to support you. I I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't say that Joe didn't support me in my NOBA. I don't think that's true at all. But he wasn't particularly a cheerleader of mine. I think he appreciated what I was doing, but he's just not that interested in shopping. So not shopping wasn't interesting to him either. And the emotions that I was going through and kind of the ups and downs of my recovery from my issues regarding shopping. I mean, I think he was happy for me and he was glad that I was changing and healing, but really his interest went only so far. So it was really useful for me to build a community here on my YouTube channel, to discover the community on the Makeup Rehab subreddit. I really am grateful that I have had you guys and that I have had my friends over on Makeup Rehab this year. It made a huge difference to me. I recommend that you make a list of YouTubers who are doing no buys and low buys and watch their channels. I recommend that you go on to Makeup Rehab, the subreddit, get a username, join the community, look around. You could plan to go back and watch my channel, watch my videos over the course of 2019. 
as they played out over the course of 2018 as a way of like having continued support. You could tell your friends and family if you might have people in your sphere who are more interested in shopping than Joe is. And I did, I mean, all of my friends and family I told and everyone was very supportive and Joe was very supportive. I don't wanna make it sound like he wasn't, but I think it does help to be in contact with other people who are actually going through it, who are like going through the gigs rather than just people who care about you and have an interest in what you're doing because they care about you. You could even start a YouTube channel like I did, or you could start an Instagram account or turn your Instagram account into a no buy account if you feel like you don't have time for YouTube. You are not alone. It's looking like, I said this in my video earlier this week, but it's looking like 2019 might be kind of the year of the no buy on beauty YouTube. and. Do what you need to do to get excited about joining the party because there's a lot of community support out here for you. All right, number four is one that I felt like I had to include on here but is not actually my advice. I want to pass along a piece of advice that I frequently read on makeup rehab and that I frequently hear people giving because it's so ubiquitous and so many people talk about it that I think that it must be useful for some people. And that is unsubscribing unsubscribing from mailing lists, from the companies that you buy from, unsubscribing from triggering channels that you don't want to watch anymore during your no buy, unsubscribing from certain Instagram accounts, and also taking like the Sephora app off of your phone and the Ulta app. Is there an Ulta app? Taking, that, taking all like the shopping apps off of your phone, those kinds of things. I, I didn't do that. I wanted my no buy year to turn me into someone who could exist in the beauty community as part of the beauty community and watch beauty content and even receive the emails and open them and find out what's going on and stay up to date with trends and be aware without that state of being causing me to overspend. And it worked. It worked. Over the course of the year, I have found myself slowly losing interest in more vapid and shopping-oriented channels, and I actually have unsubscribed from some channels, but I've done it organically. I've done it because one day I was just watching and watching along, and I was like, you know, this channel is really all just about shopping, and there's no other content here, and I don't enjoy watching it anymore. So I did it that way rather than doing like a massive group unsubscribe at the beginning of the year to protect myself. I just didn't feel like I needed that. I didn't feel like I needed to be protected from that kind of content. I also found my worldview slowly diverging from the worldview of a lot of people who I still really love to watch and who I still do watch. And I can now watch people talking about how much they love the new release that they just bought or how amazing a new skin cream is, etc, etc. And even though I might have a passing interest, I can easily separate their lives from my life and their choices from my choices and make my own choice, which is not to buy the thing. It's become second nature for me to do that. It's not even something that I have to try to do. It's just that the nature of my viewership has changed. However, if you don't need or want that, if you don't want to be what I have become, which is someone who is still completely absorbed and entrenched in the beauty community, but without being an overspender, if you would rather just kind of unplug from the beauty community a little bit and do other things with your life, then a bunch of unsubscribing might be helpful to you and it might be what you need. It's very common advice, so I wanted to include it here both to let you guys know that I actually didn't do that because you read it all over. In fact, on Makeup Rehab, I've even come in contact with some people who are really hardliners about that. Like someone was saying that she was on a no buy, but she had recently gotten an email about a sale and it was making her feel bad or something. And someone in the comments said, why are you still subscribed to that email list if you were actually serious about your no buy? you would, wouldn't be subscribed. And I just don't agree with that. I've been subscribed to Sephora's emails this whole year. I get an email from Sephora every day. It's so stupid. Their emails are so stupid. And what has happened is over the course of the year, I've just become more and more aware of how stupid it is that they send an email every day. I don't usually open the email. Sometimes I do if I 
think I need to find out what's going on, like if they're having a sale and I wanted to talk about it on my channel or something. And sometimes I'm just curious, honestly, and I open it and I see what's going on, but I, I never buy stuff. And it doesn't mean I'm not serious about my no buy. I turned myself from someone who would get an email every day from Sephora and be triggered to overspend into someone who gets an email every day from Sephora and doesn't overspend. That is possible to do. Piece of advice number five, I do actually recommend taking your credit card out of all of your online shopping platforms. That is something that also is frequently recommended and I totally endorse that. I didn't do that until partway through the year and coincidentally, it coincided with my ability to then get myself out of credit card debt right quick after that. I was not putting a ton of stuff on my credit card, obviously, because I wasn't buying very much stuff, but sometimes I would put gifts for other people or my replacements or just food, random stuff I would put on my credit card. And it wasn't until I stopped using my credit card that I stopped kind of dipping in and out of having a balance on my credit card and was able to pay it off completely. And I wish I had done that years ago, obviously, but I wish I had taken my credit card out of my online shopping platforms at the beginning of my no buy year rather than halfway through. So I do highly recommend that. Okay, the sixth piece of advice, make a list of other compelling things to do in your spare time besides shopping. I didn't particularly make a list. I just thought of a bunch of things and was really excited to commit to them and to get back to them. For me, starting this YouTube channel was a big one. This takes a ton of time. I'm actually going to make a video, one of the videos I'm planning for the last couple weeks of December is my no buy year by the numbers. One of the things that I'm adding up is how many videos I've made and kind of an estimate of how much time I've spent on my YouTube channel this year. And it's, it's pretty staggering. It takes so much time just to put out a couple of videos a week. But other than working on my YouTube channel, I would say my list, in retrospect, my list has been going to the library, reading, trying out new recipes, playing with the makeup that I already own, that has been a really big one, playing dress up in my closet, I do this sometimes, it's kind of like makeup playtime, just like closet playtime, maintaining my Instagram account on which I usually post an outfit of the day, although I have really fallen down on the job this month, but I'm planning to get back on the horse soon. I fell down on the job and I'm getting back on the horse. And decluttering my stuff, that has been kind of a long-term project that I have really enjoyed. I've spent so much time this year handling and appreciating and using, using the things that I already have that I love and letting go of the things that I don't really care for that used to be in my home. So in a way it's been a year of indulgence in beauty and materials, but it's just a kind of indulgence that doesn't involve spending money. Okay, piece of advice number seven, and this might be the most important one, AKA the only one that matters. Be hard on yourself, but also don't be hard on yourself. Be hard on yourself when it comes to your rules. They are not bendable. They are not breakable. They are not rewritable halfway through. Be cruel to yourself when it comes to sticking to your rules, no matter what kind of deal you come across on your favorite skincare, no matter how much yearning fills your soul when your favorite brand releases an eyeshadow palette that looks like it was designed for you and it's limited edition. Be hard. Don't be hard on yourself when you see yourself flailing and slipping and acting like a fool in ways that don't involve breaking your rules. So if you spend two hours on ColourPop's website, adding things into your cart just for fun, just to see how they'll all look in there, and then you X out of the window without buying anything, it's okay. As long as you didn't break your rules and make the purchase, and as long as you didn't intend to, it's okay. If you're on a replacements only no buy and you're in your second month and you order your replacement shampoo and then one day later you order your replacement face oil, deliberately ordering them in two separate packages so that you can receive two sets of free samples, it's okay. Inside of your rules, there has to be a little wiggle room for your dying habit to fight for its life and for you to wobble and indulge and be a little messy. As long as you didn't break your rules, 
you are okay. You are doing amazing. You can change your behavior overnight by making rules, but you can't change your brain that fast. It takes months. So don't be hard on yourself when you see your brain pushing back against the change. Just keep calm and stick to your rules. Okay, number eight, and this is my last piece of advice, and this one's also important. Don't consider the possibility that you might fail. Only you can choose to fail at your no buy. There's no accidental purchases. You don't slip up at something like this. That language is poison. If you buy something during your no buy, something outside of your rules, it will be because you chose to break your no buy, possibly because you never really committed to actually doing a no buy in the first place. You just said you were going to. You don't need luck. You don't need to worry that you won't have enough luck to make it. You don't have to hope that you'll make it. I see people sometimes saying, wish me luck, I hope that I'll make it through. Cross my fingers, I hope that I'll make it through. But it's not up to luck. This isn't something that's up to fate, it's up to you. Hoping implies that it's out of your control, but it's not out of your control. It is in your control. There will be no accidents unless you decide to break your no buy. There will be no slip ups. There will just be you sticking to your rules or you breaking your rules. And the good news, the good thing about it not being a matter of luck or fate, whether or not you succeed at your no buy, what that means is that if you decide to do it, you will succeed. You don't have to worry. All you have to do is sit yourself down and decide that you mean it. Make a social contract with yourself. You can do it. You can be strong. You can change yourself. It's 100% up to you. Remember, there are going to be things you want to buy. There are going to be moments when it feels painful. There are going to be serious temptations. Brands are going to continue to release things that you are going to want to buy. You will be miserable without your crutch. You will have to face the music. You're essentially signing yourself up to suffer a little bit, if not a lot, next year. You're deciding that you're going to go through some suffering in order to cure a larger and more pervasive suffering. But know that. Prepare yourself so that you don't just fold in on yourself as soon as it gets hard, because it will be hard. And other parts of your life will change. It might be like a Jenga game where you pull out the block underneath and all the other blocks come tumbling down. You might become a mess before you can rebuild yourself. And then after that, you'll have to rebuild yourself. If you really are currently using shopping to avoid yourself the way that I was, then a no buy is no easy matter. It's not casual, it's not light. You're signing up for a difficult, exhilarating, life transforming year. But if you are one of those who need it, you will know that you need it. And if you are, I highly recommend doing it. I just advise spending some time this month girding your loins and then going in with your eyes open. That is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions for me, please leave them in the comment section down below. And please remember to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. <laughs>